Hi there, Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai. Uh, today we're going to tackle my Portulacaria Afra forest that uh, you can see a photo of it on my YouTube channel. Um, what we want to do with this forest is it's kind of gone under an evolution. When it started out I was pinching the tips and it uh, the canopies of the trees got a little bigger and bigger and it started to take on the look of a tropical forest instead of what I was intending which was an African style forest. So what we want to do is we want to make these trees look like African trees. So the style I'm going to copy is a baobab tree which is the giant probably the biggest trees in the world uh, as far as circumference anyway for the trunk uh, the giant African baobab tree so we're going to try and make these Portulacaria afro trees look like baobab trees that's the challenge so let's get started we're going to go in the greenhouse and get the Portulacaria afro forest out and start working on it okay I've got the forest out of the greenhouse uh, it's been growing again since spring pretty well untouched you can see it's growing really healthily uh, lots of vigor leaves are staying small inner nodes are good on them uh, it needs weeding the moss needs pruning you can see I'll come around here the moss in this tree is growing so thick it's covering up the rocks. It's growing very heavily on the rocks. It needs weeding um, and pruning. So we're going to try and take this Portulacaria afra tree and we're going to try and make it look like a baobab forest. Which is going to be a difficult task but that's our goal. Once again before we tackle pruning and cleaning up this forest we want to study what a baobab tree looks like, its characteristics, how it grows, what it looks like, um, its proportions. So we're going to look at some pictures from the internet, study them, and that will give us a guide for how we want to prune this forest. There's an elephant bush. There's a drooping baobab. There's some bottle-shaped baobabs. There's a beautiful baobab. Here's a close-up and a beautiful one and another great one. Here's a baobab tree that I really like the proportions of. So if we take the trunk width as one, and then we look at the height of the trunk, it's 1.5 times the width of the trunk. And then if we look at the height of the branches or the crown, it's two times the width of the trunk, making the total height of the tree 3.5 times the width of the trunk. So if we go back and look at the trunk again as one, let's check out the width of the crown so we'll go up top here it's 4.5 times the width of the trunk so these are the proportions we're going to try and copy in our trees so these trees are about uh, 16 years old uh, it started out from this tree as a small plant about this size all the rest of the trees in the forest are cuttings from the main tree. Portulacaria afra really roots easily from cuttings. You can cut pretty well any thickness off, let the wound dry out for about, uh, I don't know, almost a week, and then plant it in some very dry mixture, and as the new growth starts, start increasing the watering. Uh, these are very easy to trees to grow. Uh, and they grow very quickly. Uh, they have a reputation for growing slowly, but as you can see here, this has grown in pretty well a month. And if you prune that, it subdivides and uh, you can build a, quite a thick canopy very easily on these trees. Uh, these are great trees for people who go on vacation. These trees can go easily two weeks without any water. Uh, if they do dry out, uh, the leaves will drop off, but as soon as you start watering it again, they'll uh, start coming back. It'll sprout new leaves. So it's it's a great tree and uh, easy to grow. 
Uh, I haven't had any problems with diseases. Uh, you will get aphids on the growing tips, but uh, you can just spray a little soap and water and that takes care of that. So because these trees are getting old, uh, you can see it's starting to get some, where am I pointing to? It's starting to get some uh, bark texture on the trunk and it's starting to lose its uh, ringed appearance. When the trees are young, I don't have a young, but over here, um, you can see the rings on the trunk. As it gets older and older, these start to disappear. So it, uh, it becomes more like a regular tree trunk. And uh, these trees are quite suited for imitating a baobab tree because it has a very similar, similar bark texture and color. And uh, yeah, well, let's go to it. Portulacaria afra is commonly known as elephant's bush. Uh, these leaves comprise about 80% of an elephant's diet. They come in, prune the bush down, eat everything, and it re-sprouts. So when you're pruning a Portulacaria afra or elephant's bush, don't be afraid to prune into old wood. They will bud pretty well from anywhere, given the right conditions. Um, I've started styling this tree, uh, converting them to look like baobab trees. Some of these I've taken off all the multi trunks and some of the thicker branches to get it to a single trunk. And so we're going to continue on with the styling of this tree. So if elephants like the leaves on these trees, I'm wondering if I like them too. They are edible. Some people put them in salads. So today for the first time I'm gonna try a leaf a little tiny one and see what they taste like Wow oh. what does that taste like I guess the closest I could come to describing the taste is it's like a vegetable lime. It's uh, not a pleasing taste to my taste palate. <laughs> anyway, that's, I hope I don't die now. Right. So, yeah, a very distinct taste. Whew. Whew. I'm going to go get a drink of water and flush that down. So the first step uh, in tackling the forest is I'm going to get rid of all the leaves that have fallen. I'm going to clean up the moss and I'm going to get rid of all the weeds that have grown in. So that'll be my first step and we'll come back after that's cleaned up. That way we can see the root base of the some of these trees which is this moss is like uh, quite thick. About I don't know, 15 millimeters thick now. So we're going to prune it all off and come back when we can actually see the trees and what we're doing. So these tweezers are really good for picking out the weeds. You just give them a little pull. Most of this comes out really nicely. You get the roots and all. Well, I've just begun weeding and it's starting to rain. Um, so one note on rain, if you have these trees outdoors in your bench and it does start raining, you probably want to keep bring them inside because if they get, you know, like three days of rain, you can start getting the roots to rot. So you want to keep them on the dry side. So you want to control your watering. Let <laughs> Hi chickens. Uh, so you want to let the soil dry out until it's quite dry, water thoroughly and let it dry out again. You don't want it to stay constantly moist, otherwise you can end up with root rot and uh, a lot of problems. So it's starting to rain. Uh, I'm going to finish this indoors in the greenhouse. I'm not going to film in there because my lens will fog up bad. Okay, so we'll check in after it's weeded and cleaned up the moss. Now probably a lot of this moss I'm going to strip off because 
we're not going for a tropical look with lush moss and grasses. We're going for a African savanna type look where it's dry. We'll have uh, patches of moss that simulate small bushes and that, but uh, generally we don't want the whole pot covered in moss to look lush and tropical. We want it to look dry in a harsh environment. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel the moss off and then we'll we'll save it and then we'll replant it where we want it. I think that would be easier than trying to trim it and you know pick out sections. So it comes off pretty easily. It's big and loose and coarse. So yeah we'll just save our moss and reuse it because we're only gonna plant it sparingly here and there to resemble tiny bushes. Now you can see it's just growing really thick and long here. Yeah. So that's our next step. We'll take all the moss off. So you can see here, this rock was totally covered in moss and it's quite a thick layer. Well, it's grown fairly recently since it's been in the greenhouse. It's just incredible how thick that is. So we're taking that all off. Uh, someone told me that vinegar, if you put straight vinegar and brush it on your rocks, it kills all the moss and uh, doesn't hurt the trees. So I don't know, I'm just going to pick it off, but uh, maybe we'll try that one of these days and see how it works. Okay, so we've got most of the moss removed now. We still have some cleanup work to do on the rocks. And you can see it's uh, starting to look more like an African savanna and less like a lush tropical forest. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle the main tree here. Um, the roots of a elephant bush are pretty typical of any tree. They're strong, they grow quite far in the soil uh, they get quite woody. Uh, so this tree, it always had a root that grew down. It grew down and in between the two side roots and kind of underneath the tree. And I tried several times to scar the surface of it and to try and encourage uh, horizontal roots coming out from it. And it just wasn't working. The scars just healed over and it just kept getting worse and worse. So this winter I went in, I dug the tree out I cut that root off entirely just below the surface of the soil here and my goal was to try and get some horizontal rooting coming out here and it is starting I dug down a bit and I could somewhere here I dug down there and we were getting some horizontal roots coming out now at least it's not going to get worse. So now we're going to prune the main tree. So I've got my calipers set at about the diameter of the trunk at the base here. So we know from studying the proportions of a baobab tree that we want the total height of the tree to be about 3.5 times the, the width of the trunk. So I measured it out on my piece of paper here and this works out to about three and a half times the thickness of the trunk. So you can see that the total height of our tree should be about to the top of the paper, which means we have a lot of pruning to do. Now these are approximate proportions, I mean we can uh, make it a little taller and the trunk will fatten up a little more so the proportions will always be changing slightly but but ideally we want it approximately to the top of that paper so that's where we're gonna try and prune to and create a nice canopy and it'll look again it'll look pretty bare and pathetic for a while until it grows its new leaves in so here we go we're gonna start pruning the top okay so we're going in we're gonna Start pruning, here's the height of our tree. We're just gonna start 
one branch at a time. And I'll save all these cuttings, uh, especially the thicker ones. And we'll grow, maybe replace some of the trees in the forest with some thicker trunk ones. But uh, yeah, so here we go. So approximately, we don't have to be exact, but uh, yeah, we want to be fairly aggressive here. And we'll save all our cuttings. So ideally our branches should start at the top of this line, which they sort of do. These are our trunks, which are pretty clean. And then all our branching starts above that line. So we're not too bad that way. Um, one of the things with a baobab tree is all the branches have a pretty extreme taper in them. So by taking them back to stubs, It'll branch out again, and then we'll get some nice taper in some of these branches. So, again, I, I'm going to keep as much of the original branching as I can and just compact it. We can't worry about getting the exact proportions right now. So, yeah, things like this. It, I hate taking branches off, but we just have to do it. We have to get more taper in here to make the tree more compact and reduce the height. So, we're going to take it back to here. Like that. These will make great cuttings too. And definitely want to take this one back. And get pretty tall here. Um, I want to save that branch. Yeah, so now we've got one great big thick branch off to the side that's quite long. So we've got to decide a point to cut that. Um, if we want our overall height there, we can actually cut it back somewhere in here or even back further. So we'll have to decide on that. And so the actual width of the crown is should be four and a half times the thickness of the trunk. So we start about here. That's three and a half the length of the paper plus one. So we're not too far off on our width. So we do have to do some pruning, but I think we'll keep you know some of these thicker branches in here and just trim them back. But definitely the height has to come down. But our width isn't too bad. We're not too, too wide. We are a little wide, but not bad. Yeah. So, i make some big decisions. Um, areas where there's no taper in the branches, you definitely want to cut them back to short stubs. So, you know, we'll take this one off here. And there for now. We can always shorten it more later. We can always reduce it more as we go. So we'll do it in steps. Um, there. My chickens are coming over to help out. Again, we're after extreme taper is what we're after. There you go. All right, girls. Yeah, I think we're going to take this branch off. I'm going to decide whether to take it off here or look further. Probably in here, I'm thinking. Yeah, I am. I'm thinking right about here. 
make a great cutting. We're getting there. So again, you know, branches that have no taper, cut them back as stubs. It's the only way you'll get taper is cutting them back, letting the new growth come in, cutting it back again. So gradually as you build branches, you build taper. If you let, just let them grow, they'll thicken up evenly and you get this big long fat branch with no taper. So that's not what we want. So we're taking it pretty far back. Like even this branch here, <clears throat> it's a short section, but it has no taper. It tapers a bit in this section, but you know we want to. We're going for taper, so we'll take it back. And back here. Okay. So we're getting down to the bare structure now. Um, I'm thinking a lot of this vertical growth should come off and just keep our side branches. Um, we want it to look like a baby. Even this main trunk line, I think we'll take it off so it, it divides here because you know, we want our trunk to be this high before it starts branching. So by doing that, we'll get it down lower and we'll get some better, a better look to the tree. Again, we'll save that cutting. It'll sprout and grow. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking a lot of this vertical growth has to come off. And we'll keep it pruned so the branches go away from the crown of the tree. And again here, clean that off. This one, this section has no taper, so we've got to take it back to a stump again here. Over there. And the main trunk back here, it's fat, but it doesn't have a lot of taper, and it's kind of getting above our ideal height, so I think we're going to take that back to right to there. Boys, mosquitoes. There we are, so let's look how we've done here. So our overall height should be the height of the paper. Pretty good there. So, you know, when it grows out, we're going to get branching, so it'll be a little higher. Um, height of our trunks, we've got basically a twin trunk with no branches to our the line we wanted, and then we start branching. All the branches we have so far have pretty good taper. Um, not perfect, but not bad. When the new uh, growth comes in, we'll see where it's at, but I think... We're going to leave the main trunk like that for now. Okay, so here I'm happy with the trunk line now. So here's what it looks like. From above, all our branches are fanning out from the center, which is good. Everything's got nice taper to it. I think when the leaves come in, it's going to look like a baobab tree. You can see some of the roots, we're still going to work on those. Next time we transplant that, repot it, we're going to work on the roots some more. I'm just, I think part of getting this to look like a baobab is getting nice fine surface roots, not these big thick ones. So I think we're going to have to divide them or cut them off and work on the roots anyway. So on to the next tree, which is probably that back one here we'll work on. So this this back uh, tree uh, 
I kind of took that back. It was getting quite large, interfering with the main tree. So I, I cut it back quite severely uh, this winter. So it's sprouted again, as you can see, and it's starting to grow vigorously. So all we want to do in this one is remove the lower branches to get our trunk to show so it doesn't obscure them. And then we want to reduce the leaders and start getting some branching. So not too much pruning work on that, but some. So here we go. Well, all we're going to do is just cut it off to the first pair of leaves here and get rid of our lower branches and do we want that one? I think we do. We'll keep that. Just pull that off the first the leaves and down here. And when you prune these, you can directional prune. The leaves, if you look, um, the leaves alternate their direction. Where am I pointing here? Let me get it focused too. The leaves alternate, so the first set comes out this direction, the next set comes 90 degrees. So depending on the direction you want the branch to grow, you can prune off to the direction you want it to grow. You can prune it off so the new shoots come out in the direction you want. So if you want this shoot to come out the direction of the leaf, you'd prune it off here. If you want the tip to grow the direction of this leaf, you'd prune it off here. So I just missed that totally. Okay, so this this trunk, I measured the I measured the thickness of the trunk, and I came up one and a half times the thickness of the trunk and cut it off. So that's the height we want before we get any branching. So there's another good cutting. Okay, so we've got most of the trunks pruned up. Um, I haven't done this one mainly because it has kind of uh, not some good stuff going on with the roots. It's kind of, it needs uh, replanting. Even this one down here has some root issues that we've got to sort out and we'll move it away from the edge of the pot. So I'm going to dig up those two trees and probably the one at the back here too. And this pathetic thing will give it a better place. So some of those uh, stumps we're gonna dig them out and transplant them okay so we're gonna try and get this tree out it should have quite long roots and we're gonna try not to disturb the main tree here too much there we are we're getting a lot of roots And this one's going to be dug up too, so we can pull that out together. There's that one. So you can see the roots are quite quite long and it's got a good structure. Not much on this side, so we'll prune these roots back and encourage these shoots to grow more, these roots to grow more. So we'll just keep that aside for now and get this other tree out. coming. The long roots in this one, they, uh, they can travel quite far in the pot. It's surprising and how woody they get. So we'll just give that a shake out here. So you can see the roots on that one. They need some trimming too. Pretty heavy roots here. Not as fine as we would like, but uh, that can be part of our trunk eventually. So we'll prune that up and repot it. So here's our tree we took out. Uh, it had one quite long root off to the side, which we cut off. So we're pruning the roots. We're just trying to kind of equalize them, get a nice radial root base, trim the fatter roots shorter, the finer ones we can keep growing. And we want them flat too. So we want all the roots that are going straight down, we can cut those off. As your root base grows, you can be more picky about 
pruning the roots to a finer degree, but uh, you know, for now we just kind of want to sort out the basic root structure. That one's kind of growing up out of the soil, so we'll turn that off. Anything growing straight up, remove. Anything growing straight down, remove. Keep your horizontal roots. And that's probably about it for that tree for root pruning. And there's some growing kind of inside here, but a quick prune. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So we'll re plant that tree, we'll find kind of our best angle, uh, probably about there, mm, maybe, <laughs> maybe more like that, I don't know, somewhere around there, and we'll put that tree back in the pot and not so close to the edge, so it's, we don't want, when we get our canopies going, we don't want this canopy getting in the way of this canopy, so Again, each tree has to have its own light, so we want it as far away as we can get it without getting too close to the edge of the pot. So probably somewhere about there we'll do. So we'll just dig out this old soil and plant it and put some new soil on top. We want to get our height. I think about there is pretty good. And before we put the new soil in, we'll just check all the roots are fanning out from the trunk in a radial fashion as much as we can. That looks pretty good there. So then we just start filling it in with the soil. Mosquito. And you want to make sure your soil's worked into the root ball so it's in contact with all the roots and there's no air pockets in there. So you just kind of work it in. Check our angle. It's not too bad. Move it over just a bit here, I think. More like that. Uh, just get a bit more soil. Okay. So we'll just Get it in there. I should have a little spoon. And when you're putting your new soil in, don't worry about planting it a little high around the roots because you can always, you know, go in and remove it later on to expose the roots a little more. It's better to have it, you know, in contact with all your roots than have too few and the roots sticking up near the surface where they might dry out too much. How does that look? That looks pretty good. I think that'll do. That's a good good planting. So I was going to put, this one was back here, but I think as this crown grows in, the one back here, this one, this one, I don't think we want any more trees in that area. If we do, it would be just a small tree, maybe up here. So, if we look at the roots on this one, they're kind of one-sided, but there are some fi nice fine roots here. So, I'll just cut them back a little harder on this side. Sort of, uh, yeah, sort of like that. Let's trim the vertical ones here. About like that, and then we'll cut it off. So we're getting taper. And here, 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 and here, here. And here. Yeah. Um, we don't want every tree to have multi trunks. So I guess this will be the trunk and this will be a branch. Let's put a few more of these roots back.
pretty good there. And we could put that one in there. I think we will. I think we'll put that one in there. So we'll plant that one. Let me just dig that out and we'll plant it. Okay, so we're just going to make a little pocket in here. I just stir the one we just put in there. That's pretty good. And we got to pick the front of the tree. So I'm kind of thinking about like that. Looks good. This can always be the main trunk, and if we don't like this later on, we can prune it off. So, we'll put it in the soil. How does that look? Right here it's vertical. That looks pretty good about there, I think. We'll try it there. We can always change it later on if we don't like it some soil in here. That mosquito. And we got a little too much soil in here. So we can fill that off there. Eh? Yeah. That back. Okay. Again, make sure your soil's all around. When the soil's dry like this, it fits around the roots pretty good. It just kind of flows in there. Don't put your uh, don't have your soil wet when you're repotting a tree, or it just doesn't kind of flow around the root structure. It just clumps up and rocks good. Okay. How's it look? Let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That'll do. So we're almost done. Uh, we're going to give it a watering. Some of the trees, the soil's quite dry right now, so we're going to give it a watering. We'll try not to water the newly transplanted trees very much. We'll keep that soil dry until the roots kind of heal the where we made the cuts. and. The rest we can water normally. Uh, these trees can take a little more water than a jade plant. Uh, a little more water and fertilizer. Okay, so we're gonna water it. Um, with these shallow pots, these landscape pots, what we wanna do is water it thoroughly, and then we tilt the pot up so we get all the excess water drained out. And you can water in stages, let that soak in. When it's all soaked in, water it again. Make sure it's thoroughly watered. And then we'll tilt the pot up and drain all the excess out. So I've uh, watered it. I've tilted the pot up to drain off all the excess moisture. And it's ready to go back in the greenhouse and we'll just uh, let it grow. So let's just have one last look at the trees while they're bare. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it'll uh, always need some adjustments uh, as we go, but uh, it's starting to look like a baobab tree. Um, these cuts, you don't want to put any sealant on them. You just want to let them dry out and they'll kind of uh, callus over with, with the same kind of texture as the bark. Uh, they don't roll over like a deciduous tree or a coniferous tree. They just kind of heal themselves uh, and form their own bark across the cuts. Um, you can see one back here is still a little rough looking but uh, as the tree grows grows they all smooth out and uh, you'll hardly see them at all someday so yeah that's it uh, Portulacara afra is now our baobab forest 
So Nigel Saunders for KW Bonsai, thanks for watching and goodbye.